and welcome back to Bible Study by the Pond. John 10 I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him, because they know his voice. Jesus Christ is the shepherd. He's also the sheep pen. We must stay within him. Nobody else. We must get out of our churches. They have tried to crawl in some other way. They're trying to break down God's sheep pen. They're building their own. But it won't do you any good. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Everybody follows the crowd. Oh, where are the most people going? we got to go there. That must be the place where God is. It's just the opposite. God is where there's two or three gathered together. Not two or three thousand. The wrong place to be. It's too noisy, too distracting. And probably it's all about man-made wisdom and understanding. Some man is taking the glory, not Jesus. Therefore Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. Not a church, not a denomination, not a pastor. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Look at the churches today. They claim to represent Jesus Christ and yet the divisions within them is unbelievable. The fighting, the arguing, the backbiting. They hate and kill each other claiming to be of God. Obviously God is not there. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Everybody in the churches, they just, they're, they're taking the cue from the pastors and the denominations and the churches they're in, all about pride and ego and selfishness. But Jesus, he is the good shepherd. He lays down his life for the sheep. There would be no backbiting. There would be no hate, no hurting, no fighting if everybody was humble and everybody lived as Jesus commanded. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. That would be the pastors in our churches. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. And that he does. The pastors today, they've all run away. They have not provided the sheep the food that they need to have. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. We must bring people out of their churches and bring them to Jesus so that there will only be one flock, not thousands of different sheep pens all claiming to be the sheep pen. We must bring people to Jesus. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. We need to have the same command in our lives. We need to lay down our lives for our neighbors. 
At these words the Jews were again divided. Many of them said, He is a demon possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? That's right. When I teach the teachings of Jesus, very few people want to listen. They run away. The spirit within them is not the same as the spirit within me. The spirit of Jesus to teach his words and his words only. But others said, these are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Then came the Feast of Dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple area, walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Now, if you have been following along in these readings, a few chapters back, Jesus told them very plainly. He said, I am. They understood exactly what he was saying. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall, not, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Jesus and the Father, they are one in purpose. They are one in character. They are one in their desire and their plan for salvation. But they are two individuals. Jesus talked to his Father. When Jesus opens up his hands and we crawl in, there is no power on earth that can take us out of his hand except one. Only one power, and that's your own. Nothing can take us out of God's protection if we voluntarily remain in His hand. But if we decide that we no longer want to be there, nothing can keep us in His hand. God never forces. He cannot control us. We must use our free will and decide where we want to be. Do we want to be with those who are teaching the teachings of Jesus to stop sinning, to be perfect, and to keep the Ten Commandments to get our eternal life? Or are we going to crawl out of his hand and be lost? Again, the Jews picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to him, to them, I have shown you many great miracles from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any of these, replied the Jews, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Solves the problem right there. They understood. I don't know why the Muslims have a problem, or why the Jehovah's Witnesses have a problem, or why anybody else has a problem. The Jews understood, and they were standing there. He is a holder of the God title. He is God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I have said you are gods. If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and the scriptures cannot be broken, what about the one whom the Father set apart as his very own and sent into the world? You have to read those Old Testament scriptures very carefully. Okay, he's not calling them gods as the eternal self-existing God. Okay, but Jesus was simply using a term from the Old Testament just to get them to think. Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy because I said I am God's son? Do not believe me unless I do what my Father does. But if I do it, even though you do not believe me, believe the miracles that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I in the Father. 
Again, they tried to seize him, but he escaped their grasp. We are also supposed to be adopted into the family. We are supposed to be doing the same miracles by the power of God. So that people can know the power of God around us. That is why there is healing in the book, Change Your Life Biblically. For those who obey it, study it, teach it, support it, promote it. People tell me who do that, of the miraculous healing power in their lives. Then Jesus went back across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing in the early days. Here he stayed and many people came to him. They said, though John never performed a miraculous sign, all that John said about this man was true. And in that place, many believed in Jesus. We want people to read the character of Christ within us and to know that there is a God and that those who hear the word can look to our Father in heaven and know that Jesus is God. Have a good day.